A great photograph can make someone change their mind. People don't know what they don't know. They have their preconceived ideas. They'll form an opinion of something that they've never really encountered. And sometimes if a picture is powerful enough, it can take them there. It can change their minds. You might get one in your lifetime, but it's worth working your whole life to make that one picture. I bet they want this story. And we can, we can talk while I'm out there. My name is Katie Orlinski, and I'm a photographer. The first time I picked up a camera was when I was around 14, and it was a birthday present from my father. And I loved it. It was a Pentax. I would shoot black and white. They were pictures of, like, a man sitting next to a statue. Like, you know, 14, 15-year-old person art. It took me a really long time to figure out my own voice, to figure out the stories that I was best at telling. I don't fit into a box of a photographer. I photograph so many different and diverse stories. I like to change my own mind. When I find a story that blows me away, I kind of assume that it will do the same for other people. A lot of my photography has this one thing in common. I photograph people living their lives within extreme situations. I think these people are interesting, strong, resilient. Hi! How are you? Good, how are you? My name is Kristen Pace, and I'm a professional dog musher. That means that I raise and train sled dogs and run 1,000-mile sled dog races. My husband, Andy, and I run Hay Moose Kennel. We decided in 2011 we wanted to start a sled dog team, which is just the most absurd undertaking of all time. We started with four dogs, and now we have 30. Here you are, Ham. Yes, you are. Oh my god. So I, I wasn't could... kidding when I said I hadn't brushed my hair in two weeks. You can't tell. OK. Ow. Would you maybe use your arm and lean on something? I met Katie last summer. One of my best friends had showed up to show us this litter of puppies, and out jumps Katie. So it was like, hey, look at all these puppies, and also, there's like a National Geographic photographer here. <laughs> all right, so chin down just a bit. When I got my first assignment in Alaska, I had never even heard of mushing, and I had no idea what the Iditarod was, which is sort of the most famous dog sled race. And they race 1,000 miles across the Alaskan wilderness, somewhere between like 70 and 90 teams. It takes years to build a team and to qualify for the race. You could be going through negative 60. You have to be completely self-sufficient and run on little to no sleep for about eight days. It's any kind of like right here. Okay. I've covered the races as a whole in the past, but really it was a sports story. This looks great. For this story, I'd like to focus on Kristen, who's gonna be running her first Iditarod. I'd really like to tell the story of one person and what it takes to run this race. My goal is always to capture intimate moments within these extreme circumstances. I think it's really important to capture images that make people feel something for the other person that has a universal quality to it because everybody loves and everybody is devastated. I want the photographs I make to make people feel things because when I'm taking them, I'm feeling things.
after experiences covering conflict and losing friends, I definitely became pretty cynical and disillusioned. I was still shooting, but my heart wasn't in it. I deep down really hoped that it wasn't forever and that something would come around that got me going again. Yeah. And then it did when I went out to Alaska. How many dogs? I'm just gonna take eight today because it's so icy and yeah. we're gonna be stopping. <sighs> yeah, it's gonna be twice this long for the Iditarod. Wow. <laughs> Isn't that nuts to think about? Trail. So the feeling of being out in the middle of nowhere, totally alone with the dog team, it's the ultimate test because it's like every experience you've ever had in your life and all of the training you've ever done in your life has led you to this moment. And here you are and there's no one here to reach out a hand and help you. It is totally up to you to get you and these 16 living things that you love more than anything in the world safely to the next spot on the map. It gets you to the root of yourself. And I think that's why it's so addicting. This is probably the best photo from I the races. I love that. <laughs> the thing that surprised me the most about the mushers were how many female mushers there were. God, she looks like a badass. Yeah. You made all of us not smile. I have some smiley photos. Whatever. Whatever. You're trying to make us all look really tough. You are really tough. <laughs> are you nervous for the Iditarod? I'm excited. I can't wait to see the ocean. And be and just to know that like we got there from here. We got all the way to the ocean from here. obsessed with something the way you have to be to be a dog musher and that's something that's inspiring to me I relate to being obsessed with stuff because that's kind of how I get with my stories how many Iditarods have you ran this is my first one yeah a lot of the women mushers get asked what is it like to be a woman musher running the Iditarod and it's kind of a crazy question to get asked because it's really the last thing any of us think about you're just a dog musher. What matters is how good of a dog driver you are and how good you are at surviving and building a fire when you get wet and cold. No one cares if you have boobs. <laughs> we gotta move, okay. Yep, I gotcha. 
Can I just shoot this one person and then I'm out of here? Thanks. It wasn't until going to Alaska where I came to this realization that I can make important work that still has a message and inspires me and it doesn't have to be sad. It's nothing new to them, but from an outsider's perspective, it's amazing and I think it's something that would be great for young girls all over the world to see this sport that's co-ed that women are kicking ass in. This is Kristen There's so much going on in the world. There's a lot of darkness, but there's also a lot of light and a lot of beauty, and I don't want everything that I photograph to be about one or the other. Okay.